Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about a Canon lens that I have been shooting recently. Canon has introduced such an incredibly powerful line of compact mirrorless cameras over the past year, including the Canon EOS R7, the R10, and the R50. At the same time, they're aggressively expanding their RF mount lens lineup, and one of the lenses I've been most excited about shooting underwater is the Canon RF 85mm f2 macro IS STM. I just got back from a week in the Bahamas with it, and I'm going to run through what I liked and what I didn't like. Let me start out by saying that I'm not really a macro shooter. If you've read my articles on the website, you know that I usually prefer to shoot wide angle video, but I've been intrigued by the 85 millimeter. Typically you think of 85 millimeter as a portrait lens. So I was interested that Canon added the close up macro capabilities. I'm often looking for gear that will be just as useful on the surface as it is underwater. And I found this particular combination to be really compelling. If you enjoy shooting family members or even weddings and events, this lens will be something that you will want to use in between dive trips. Now, usually for macro photography, we reach for the Canon RF 100mm f 2.0 l macro lens, which typically retails between $1,200 and $1,300 here in the US. The 85mm is less than half that price. Note that it's not a one-to-one -one magnification macro lens, it's actually one-to-two magnification ratio, meaning it reproduces objects at half size. That's about three times the magnification of the 18 to 45 millimeter kit lens, but less than the 1.4 times that the RF 100 millimeter macro does. This affects how big the object appears in your frame when you're taking the photo. I found that the magnification ratio of the 85 was perfectly adequate when combined with the crop of an APS-C sensor and the inherent magnification of a flat port underwater. And unless your primary purpose is to enter a photo contest, you can always crop the image to your heart's desire in post-production. My primary reason for shooting a compact mirrorless camera underwater is the smaller size of the system. The RF 85mm is about half pound lighter and two inches shorter than the 100mm. Now, if you haven't shot a longer macro lens, don't be surprised that it's not exactly lightweight. The lens is 17.6 ounces, 3 inches in diameter, and just over 3.5 inches long. It does physically extend and retract as it moves through its focal range. This is something I've noticed that topside photographers are mentioning in their reviews, but inside of a lens port underwater, you don't notice it at all. I talked to a couple of experienced shooters who tried the 85mm underwater for the first time and actually struggled with it. I think the two keys to my initial success were working distance and navigation of the camera's autofocus modes. I actually really liked the working distance of this lens, but at first it did throw me off. I tried to get really close to something small and I struggled to lock focus. The minimum focus distance is actually just shy of 14 inches from the sensor plane, so you can't get right up on top of something unless you add an external close-up lens to the front of the housing's port. Once I got more used to it, I realized I can quickly and easily shoot shy fish from several feet away. Then I just had to be aware of which directions my strobes were pointed. The other thing that may be hanging up seasoned shooters is autofocus mode selections. We're going to be doing a whole video on this, but let me summarize. I know many photographers that leave their camera on spot AF when shooting macro, but Canon's new AF tracking algorithms are so good and you should really start trusting them. I think it's essential anytime you're shooting a moving subject. I primarily shot servo, expand or whole area AF, subject tracking set to animal and eye detection on. I easily tracked and shot gobies, chromies, and damsels that would have driven me to tears a few years ago. I liked the tracking autofocus with the camera's AF on button. I'm not really a fan of shutter half to press because I really get a little trigger happy and sometimes it seems like I pull my trigger too early. Instead, I like holding the AF down with my thumb 
to lock focus and track my subject while I wait for the right moment. Then pressing the shutter will refocus and take the picture. There are some subjects that are difficult to focus on. I notice the camera can get a little confused if you're shooting a subject that's not moving, like a Christmas tree worm. The good news is that static subjects give you enough time to quickly switch to spot AF for that particular shot. It's not always necessary, but it's good to know. Keep in mind that the lens can focus both close and far away. In macro photography, there can be things that are both near and far within a single autofocus point. For example, I was shooting a flamingo tongue resting on a thin stalk of coral, and that stalk of coral was waving in the current with nothing immediately behind it. I found myself focused on the rock in the background instead. So on those occasions, I had to focus on something more stable at the same distance as the subject, then work my line of sight over to the actual subject. There is a focus limiter switch on the side of the lens, but it can't be accessed underwater, so I left it on the full range. I didn't want to limit myself to only shooting shots within the 14 to 20 inch range. I was shooting the 85 millimeter macro with the Canon R7 and R10 cameras in a DLM mount housing. This required a flat port and extension combined. The front of the port is threaded for the attachment of 67 millimeter threaded external close-up lenses. The 85 millimeter is easy to install inside of the DLM housing. You need to put the camera body into the housing first, then bayonet the lens on through the port mount. The large diameter of the lens is a tight squeeze, so just be careful when lining it up and rotating it into place. I put the extension onto the back of my flat port and then attach the whole assembly in one go. In conclusion, the Canon RF 85mm f2 macro is a solid lens for underwater imaging. Check out my gallery of the images through the links below. You won't find any award winners, but I think you can blame the photographer and not the lens for that. The 85mm would not be my choice for underwater video. There are some other great lenses that we will cover another day. Thanks for joining me and happy shooting.